The dollar is incredibly stable. I very rarely go to bed at night worrying that my dollar is going to be worth less the next day. But if I place myself in the shoes of someone else in Latin America and in parts of Asia, uh, there's a real challenge with monetary mismanagement, corruption. I think we will see in our lifetime uh, citizens of a nation opt in to their own digital currency. We will see a grassroots movement where people say, look, I trust this digital currency more than I do for my sovereign currency, and I'm going to choose to operate in that. So the three aspects of digital currency that really excite me is the innovation it introduces, the efficiency it can provide, and the equality of opportunity. And when I think about that from a payments perspective, for example, the innovation is a no-brainer. Instead of these closed incumbent proprietary systems, you now have a technology that anyone can innovate on and on top of and build. On the efficiency standpoint, you now have competition in the space. And now there's an alternate way to send worldwide global payments at a very low cost. And when I think of a quality of opportunity, I don't need now to go sign up for an account. I can effectively be my own bank by storing my own digital currency with just owning a smartphone. And when people ask me, hey, what can I use Bitcoin for? The most simple, straightforward example I always point to is you can use it to buy stuff online, right? Expedia, you can book a hotel room with it, or you can buy patio furniture famously on overstock.com. I don't think that's the zero to one type progress that digital currencies are really going to make a meaningful difference for. There's really going to be alternative use cases that uh, the existing systems can't do. And a good example of that would be micropayments. If I'm a a real-time media streaming company, instead of doing a subscription-based model where every month you know, my customers have to pay $20, I can now theoretically use digital currency to charge by the minute, by the second, if I want to. Bitcoin and digital currencies are not necessarily going to challenge and replace kind of existing financial systems in the way we think about it. They're going to be complementary, and they're going to add new use cases and new opportunities and open up new businesses. And I think that's where we're going to see most of the progress come. As much as I may want to use a micropayment or a macro payment solution that a digital currency can, can provide, I'm not going to do so if I risk losing significant value. The fact is right now it's a relatively new digital asset. People are having a, a difficult time trying to value it. Government regulation, macroeconomic uh, events all affect the price of digital currency significantly. But in and of itself, assets like Bitcoin actually should be in many ways more stable than kind of existing fiat currencies because we know exactly what the introduction mechanism is. Everyone knows without a doubt what the supply is. So in time, I think we'll see the, the uh, price stability of digital currencies like Bitcoin rival that of many fiat currencies. Now you have the ability for people to operate with a open payment network in a very closed way where they're not converting into and out of digital currencies and they operate purely and organically inside that currency. Mm -hmm.